Hello, my little fuzzy bat butts. I had a really, really good response to my Yule Tree video, so thank you guys all so very much for not only watching my video, but commenting and letting me know what videos you would like to see in the future. That helps me a lot kind of have a direction with my channel. And it also is really, really exciting to see so many of you commenting and um, just sharing your thoughts and taking the time to comment. So thank you so much for doing that. Uh, after I put up my Yule Tree, I was reading a lot of the comments and I got to thinking about how intriguing it is um, how the holiday season has turned into a real kind of uh, mix match of many, many different cultures and many, many different beliefs. I wanted to talk about some of my favorite Yuletide traditions, but I also wanted to talk about um, Okay, well, something that is off topic from Christmas that I will be including in this video is um, that Brady and I are going to Mexico City this week on Wednesday. So I will have at the end of this video, we can pack my suitcase together and we can pick out outfits. So that's a little bit of a change of speed and a change of pace than what I'm talking about currently, but I just wanted to let you guys know if that's something that interests you, stay until the end of the video and you'll be able to see inside of my closet. But for the first story I have involving this wonderful season is whenever I was younger, much younger, I want to say I was in the first, mm, take that back, it would start in pre-K, which is pre-kindergarten, uh, kindergarten, first, and second grade at our elementary school, the library, every November and December, the whole library would be turned into like a mock museum, a fake museum, and they would put up displays around the whole library. You could still check out books and you could still get things um, from the library, but they would move the shelves out of the way and the whole center of the library would be changed into a little museum of how people from all around the world celebrate the holidays. So each table would be strictly dedicated to one country and how that country celebrates the holidays. As a little kid, I adored this whole thing that would happen in the library and I don't remember them doing this past the second grade, so maybe the school decided to stop doing it, I don't know, but I remember as a little kid, I would tell the teacher that I had to go to the restroom, specifically so I could walk to the library and I could walk around the library and look at all the displays of how people from around the world celebrated the holidays. It was a really exciting display. Um, they had like cookies from around the world, they had food from around the world, um, specifically uh, centered around the holidays and um, they also the displays that they would make they would sometimes have little tiny dioramas of a living room and how that living room would be directed or uh, decorated for the holidays they also had photos that were in frames on each table that kind of showed how the city would decorate like the major city of that country would decorate for the holidays and um, there was something about it that felt like a fantasy world or otherworldly to me as a little kid because growing up in a small town and um, seeing this in the library, I, I always grew up and thought that my little world was just that, my little world, and there wasn't anything outside of it. So whenever I would see these displays in the library, it really would just open Pandora's box inside my mind and I would get really, really excited at the fact of um, not only did it feel like a fantasy world that I was looking at, but it also had such magic around it, seeing all the different ways that people celebrate. My favorite booths or tables to look at whenever I would sneak out of the classroom on my restroom break, I would go to the library and my favorite ones um, booth wise to go to, I loved looking at the Japanese booth because um, the Japanese booth or table had bright colors and I loved all the bright colors on that table. And the Chinese table, I wanna say that they had like the 
parade uh, paper dragons on the table and I think they put that there to kind of show um, what they did for New Year's which directly follows the holiday season but I loved looking at the paper dragon and they had like a miniature model of a paper dragon and his little face I just always thought was so cute and super cool and I would stare at that for a little while. I really loved the Holland booth because the Holland booth had, um, I keep saying booth, but they were tables. I don't know why I keep saying booth. So the Holland one, I specifically, no, this was, this was either Holland or Sweden. My memory is blurry, mind you. I was a little kid then, so I can't remember quite. But um, I remember seeing a doll that was dressed in a completely white robe and had a crown on that had red candles in the crown and her hair was blonde and it was braided really pretty and I used to just stare at the doll because I thought the doll was really really pretty and I loved her lacy white gown with the red candles I just thought it was super super pretty so I loved to stare at that booth and of course I would go to the Germany table and my favorite thing about the Germany table was that it was loaded with gingerbread and um, snacks like snickerdoodles and things like that. Lots of random snacks were always on that table. So I would love to kind of like sneak those. So with thinking about all of the holiday stuff in elementary school and the things that I found really cool about places around the country as a kid and really like ignited my imagination and this really fantastical atmosphere, I decided that I wanted to share with you guys some really fun things that I love about the holiday season and um, it's just kind of a cool way to look at different ways and different where where things that we do during the holiday season originally came from it's kind of exciting and fun because it has like this very mystical uh, fantasy-esque vibe about it let me see I had a book that I wanted to show you guys as well so I get asked all the time about pagan books um, which ones to purchase what to look into and um, this company puts out different Sabbath books about different Sabbath um, every, like every, I don't know how to, how I'm wanting to describe this, but they have every Sabbath in book form, and these books are really well written, they're beautiful, they're illustrated, really nice, they have different examples of different things to do, so this one specifically is for Yule, and, um, I'll go ahead and I'll link this down below if you guys are interested in this book. Um, I have one for every Sabbath and I really, really love these thoroughly. And um, specifically this one is just talking about celebrations for the winter solstice. So, or solstice, 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 words. Anyways, this book's really good. If you guys are interested in that and you're interested in kind of a pagan take on how to work with nature and celebrate nature, this book is really good. So, diving into my notebook, which is really cute, look at the, artwork on my notebook. Ah, I love notebooks. I love writing. So anyways, I wanted to dive in and share some fun little holiday facts with you guys. So this one is really, really interesting and I liked it a lot. Everybody knows about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It's a really popular folklore and I'm pretty positive everyone from I'm pretty positive most everyone from around the world knows about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, but um, Rudolph is actually from European North. Wow, what, forgive me, my uh, note-taking skills apparently suck. So Rudolph is actually from Northern Europe and um, the winter solstice, where it was the female reindeer who pulled the sun goddess's sleigh. So um, the reason, I guess, You'll see here in a second, but it was a female reindeer instead of a male reindeer who would carry or um, pull the sun goddess's sleigh. The image is similar, though there is a gender reverse, and the main female or the main character is a female reindeer. So the female reindeer does not shed her antlers where the male reindeer does shed his antlers. So. The female deer 
is the one who you see in modern Yule imagery, which I find really interesting. And in the old lore, the deer mother carried the light of the sun in her antlers. So instead of the reindeer, one being male and two having a glowing nose, the reindeer was actually female because she doesn't shed her antlers and she had glowing antlers that were believed to have the sun in them. So you actually probably, if um, you'll notice that a lot of pagans love to work with antlers and antlers are believed to be um, symbolistic or a symbolic of many things, but I like to look at them and I kind of think of that sun nature that is inside the antlers. And I also think of, um, you guys have probably seen the Miyazaki film, uh, Princess Minoke, and there's a deer creature that walks around the forest and where he walks in the forest, flowers grow up from the ground and vinery grows up from the earth. And I like to really have that visual whenever I think of reindeer or I think of any um, deer-like creature. I always think of how like they're like the uh, godmother or godfather of the forest. So here's a fun little tidbit I have on mistletoe. It was once revered by the druids found in oak and apple trees. So mistletoe is um, something that grows in oak and apple trees. The druids called mistletoe the cure of all ills, ills. <laughs> And there was a lot of ceremony that was used in cutting mistletoe off of these trees and they would actually use a golden sickle to cut the mistletoe from trees. That's kind of cool to have that little tidbit of information about how mistletoe was very revered in um, older times, in a time long, long ago. So the bringing of greenery into the home is also a well recognized in pagan traditions. As in the dead of winter, you are to look ahead for the birth of new life, which is kind of like what I was explaining before. Um, bringing in all of this greenery and everything is to help remind you of the new life that's going to come in the spring. Um, the use of a Yule tree, which this is intriguing, the use of a Yule tree is very old. The actual roots of the tree and where it first started coming into homes is difficult to trace and um, it's also not very certain because it is used in so many cultures. It's a lot more complex than um, the idea that we're most used to or most people are used to about trees. A lot of people call them Christmas trees and um, they don't realize how complex and deep the history is of the tree. Anyways, in the Roman times, we find that the fir tree was used to decorate temples during the winter to honor the god of Saturn, which um, this was around December the 17th and it was a time to visit friends and have feasts. I find that very, very cool. But also, I have another little fun fact about Vikings who would decorate evergreen trees with food, statues of the gods they worked with, and runes. They believed the trees had spirits that would leave during the winter months, but by decorating the trees, it would entice those spirits to come back in the spring. That's a cute, really cool fact that I'm super into. Um, here's another really fun thing. In Devon, if you don't remove all your decor before Candle Mass Day, which I don't really know much about that, I don't know what it is or anything, but um, if you don't remove all of your decor before Candle Mass Day, then it would leave to a negative visit to fall upon you. If you leave even one branch up, for every leaf on that branch, there may be as many goblins to plague you. So be sure to take down your decorations. I have one more really fun fact that I find um, very, very uh, magical. Vikings would create a giant sun wheel which looked a lot like a Christmas wreath. It would be burned and rolled down a hill to help attract the sun, which you'll kind of see that link of uh, the reindeer antlers emitting the sunlight. So as you can see, the sun was a very special instrument during this time of year because it does get so dark and uh, I don't think it's dreary, but it does get dark and foggy and um, not as bright as the other months. 
So now that we've had some fun talking about Yule, I'll go ahead and switch over to me packing up my suitcase for Mexico City. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy what's about to happen at the end of me packing my bag. I'll go ahead and end the video as well. So thank you so much for watching. Feel free in the comment section down below to let me know what you would like to see in the future. Stay tuned to see the rest of the video and I will have vlog footage for you very soon from Mexico City. So welcome back to my closet. It's been a little bit since you guys have been able to explore this sacred space with me. Uh, Brady and I are actually going to Mexico City this Wednesday or Thursday. We leave on Wednesday, I think, but we're going to Mexico City. We have some friends that are from the Netherlands and Germany, and they are going to be in Mexico City. They ask us if we would like to join them so that we all can hang out and be reunited as the lovely family that we are. Of course, Brady and I happily said yes. So I am here today in my closet to take you guys on the adventure with me of packing my suitcase, which is right here. Bloop. My lovely, lovely suitcase. It's one of these hard, hard cases that has a cute little skull on the front of it, if you can see. Um, and I put the strap around here that we got in Spooky Box Club. Was it last video? Last video that I did the unboxing or two videos back? So we'll go ahead and take that off so we can get inside of the suitcase. I'll show you guys the interior and this is purely because the interior is super cute. It's all skulls! Look at that. So adorable. I love it so much. But um, we're going to be packing this bad boy today. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that on the ground and we'll throw clothes in there as we go. Um, so for the festival, it's a music festival. Oh, I didn't even tell you guys about this. So we're meeting our friends that are from the Netherlands and Germany in Mexico City for a music festival, but not just any music festival. It is a goth music festival. I know, shock, surprise. Everybody is um, totally wasn't expecting that, but we're going to go ahead and pick out outfits for the festival and just hanging out in Mexico City. I thought you guys might enjoy this video so you can see a little bit more of my closet since it has changed so much and I haven't really done a fashion related video in a while. So you can kind of see my process for picking out outfits and coming out with different combinations and looks. So I'm gonna show you guys probably a couple outfit combinations that I will be wearing for the Mexico City trip, which you will see in the vlog footage of the trip. Um, so stay tuned to my channel if you wanna see what the outfits look like once they are on me, but I'm just gonna walk you guys through my selection process for putting together festival outfits. Also, quick note, um, the lighting in here is pretty terrible so I'll be fixing that in the filters um, on my video editor so hopefully that will take care of that issue it might be a little bit grainy I do apologize for that um, I am going to be getting a new camera soon and there's going to be a lot of positive changes for my channel here in the future because you guys have been supporting me so much I'm going to be putting more money into my YouTube and I'm going to be putting um, a lot more time and energy into my YouTube so thank you guys so much for supporting me and because of your amazing support I'm going to be putting a lot more effort into what I'm doing so without with all that out of the way said and done let's go ahead and let's start putting together some outfits for this really fun festival. It's going to be in the 70s the whole time we're there. During the day it'll be in the 70s. At night it's going to hit down to the 50s or 43 degrees which means it'll be a little bit chilly but it's a very tolerable chilly. It's a nice a nice breeze at night so I will have to pack accordingly to those conditions. So I have some staple pieces that I'm for sure going to be working with and I suppose those are going to be the things that I'll show you first so you can kind of have a basic idea of what I'm working with. I really want to create some um, traditional gothic looks but I also have really been enjoying 
incorporating my more um, northern European like uh, Nordic Viking type look with a really old school well 70s style Stevie Nicks like early early 70s Stevie Nicks um, mixed with goth and um, trad style which sounds really weird but Together, I think that it could be something really beautiful, and it's something that I've been really trying hard to get a lot of cool pieces so I can fully go, like, full throttle with that sort of look. So that's kind of my headspace for this music festival. So the first item I have I'm really excited about, it's this lace robe, and I believe I showed you guys this, well, I know for sure I showed you guys this in my video um, whenever I was talking about the Halloween party where I got to be a guest judge. This was the robe that I wore for the night and I'm planning on incorporating this into some outfits while I am at the music festival in Mexico City. So this is gonna be the basis of one of the outfits. I'll go ahead and put that to the side. I also have these skirts that I've been obsessed with so very, very recently, I've had a new obsession, and that is with skirts that are tulle. So skirts that have this really pretty mesh material on them, and I can't really get enough of them. This one is completely see-through, and there's actually glitter on it. I think it's really pretty, and I think that not only does it have that late 70s look about it, but it also has a nice uh, trad, traditional gothic look about it too. Of course, the glitter and stuff is more of a recent trend. Um, I mean, in the 80s they had that as well, but it wasn't like something that people really did with their looks. I love this one. It's also another tool skirt, but it has flowers at the bottom of it. I think it's a nice little twist. I have two other tulle skirts. This one has um, pearls that are sewn onto it. And then the one behind it is a plain tulle skirt that has a lot of body and twirls. Really, really pretty. So my main staple pieces of my wardrobe have indeed been these really beautiful see-through tulle skirts. Um, I can't really get enough of them. And every time I see them, I'm very quick to purchase them. And they've actually been a really popular in the, in, actually in like all stores, I've been seeing these non-stop at Forever 21, Rue 21, Charlotte Ruse, um, Target even, like uh, secondhand shops, not so much. It's kind of been like a more of a newer thing with the new year and I'm really loving them. So I've been loading up on those. I have a couple more staple pieces that I'll show you guys before we start putting some outfits together. The boots that I'm planning on wearing for the entire music festival are some suede boots. The first pair being this that I wore to the Depeche Mode vlog video that you guys saw. I really love these. I feel like they super channel that Stevie Nicks look. And um, I've always loved the symbology behind butterflies. I think that they're really magical little bugs. <laughs> And I, I, I don't know, these boots, there's something really special about them. They're the perfect, perfect height, and they get slouchy sometimes, and it kind of adds this nice aesthetic to the overall look. I also have another pair of boots that I'll be wearing. These are also suede, and they lace up. They're very witchy looking, and I think that that's kind of like the main basis of their appeal for me is how witchy they are. The only thing that could make these boots better than what they are is if they were pointed. Shaws have been another thing that's been a recent obsession of mine. Um, I've gotten all of these from a store called Earthbound. This one is really pretty. It's suede and it has this nice fringe on it. It's a really, really soft suede material as well. And since it will be getting cooler at night in Mexico City, I thought that these would be a great alternative to a jacket because I don't, I do pretty well in the cold, so I don't need anything too heavy. And these will probably do the trick. I've got a couple other ones to choose from just depending on the outfit that I want to put together. I love this one. It's velvet. It's a deep, deep blue velvet and the actual trimming on it is really pretty as well. It's like silk. 
So it's silk and velvet, and it's a very lush texture. I quite like it. This next one is a really, really soft. It almost has like a granny vibe, but I kind of, that's, I'm into it. I think it's cute. It has three roses on it. I think it looks super witchy. I love the fringe on these shawls, and I think that that's kind of like the main appeal. This one I got from a local, or not local, sorry. I got from an Etsy seller, um, Sovereign. It's a really cool stuff, and it all has runes and things from North Norse mythology kind of incorporated into it, so I'll probably wear this at some point with something. So now that I have shown you all my staple pieces, let's go into building an outfit. I already know what I want to do for the first outfit, which um, is for the music festival that we'll be going to. I for sure want to use this top, if I can find it, I think it's up here. Here we go. So I actually have it on a pants hanger, but I adore this top. It's a see-through mesh top with a tie lace-up front and the sleeves on it are kind of like kimono sleeves in the fact that they're a little bit longer, or I guess you could call it bell sleeves. They're bell sleeves on here. But it's a really, really pretty mesh top, and I want to incorporate this with one of my wonderful mesh skirts, and I actually already specifically have one in mind. Let me see if I can locate it pretty quickly. Da -da 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 -da. I'm going to do, I think, this skirt and this top. So it's a lot of flowy material that we have right now. And the way that we're going to break up, because both of these are honestly kind of shapeless with, because of the fact that they are so flowy and fluid. So the way that we're going to break that up is we'll take a belt. Um, I'll probably use... I'll probably use this belt and I will belt the waist so that it'll have more form to it right here. And then I will be wearing tattered tights, uh, probably like two or three pairs of tattered tights. Um, I'll be wearing a tank top under this probably. That's something I should grab as well so I don't forget because I don't really want the whole world to get to see my um, body and I'll probably incorporate one of those shawls with the outfit and then um, lots of accessories, a whole lot of accessories. As I'm picking out these outfits, I've kind of come to realize that you guys are probably going to see a trend with what I'm picking out, especially since um, they all kind of have the same structure in which I'm building them. But this next outfit, I'm going to use the skirt with the really pretty pearls that have the, it's just all over the skirt, lots of these pearl decorations. I'm actually going to wear this very oversized t-shirt since um, it's going to be in the 70s. I probably won't need a jacket during the day. And so that's the idea behind this outfit. It's a really oversized shirt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wear a belt or a waist cincher around so that it'll take in the sides and it'll be with this skirt and once again some tattered leggings and tights. My next look that I have planned is going to be a lot more elvish in nature. So I'm going to have this skirt that has the mesh with the flowers and for the top I'm actually going to do this really cool top that is by Anki Clothing. If you remember whenever I was at Maraluna I stopped at their booth and I purchased a lot of clothes from there. And um, this is actually from Wave Gothic Treffen. Two years I purchased this. Two years ago I purchased this. It has an angled cut in the front. And on the back side, there is actually like an elvish hood. So it's a very sharp pointed hood that you can wear. And it looks kind of like something from The Legend of Zelda or a dark elf would wear. I thought that that would be a really cool combination together. And then also I'm going to wear this jacket that's just a sleeveless jacket. And at the bottom, there's just a ton of different textures here. This definitely has um, a forest witch elvish vibe about it. And I might even combine this into some other outfits as well, just kind of depending on my mood and um, what ends up happening 
So you'll be able to see all the outfits I pick on my Instagram page for sure, but I am definitely bringing this vest along with me just because of how witchy it looks. I went ahead and I put the robes in my suitcase, the lace robe um, and also the sleeveless jacket. I put in all four skirts and the tops that I had just recently showed you and I decided that that's probably enough and I can rotate the tops um, depending on the days. So I just grabbed some extra tops that I can have as a choice for wear. So this is a tank top that I got from Express um, two years ago and it's a high-low tank top so it's short in the front and in the back it has a very very long train. It's a really really pretty tank top and it's actually one of my favorite pieces I have. However, I don't get to wear it very often. So I thought that this would be really fun to pair with one of the super tulle skirts and put a couple of belts around the waist along with some super neat accessories. This would definitely be something I would wear if it's a little bit warmer outside or I could wear this with my lace robe that I also have packed in here. The next top that I picked out is this one right here and it's from Forever 21. It's a really, really cool top. It looks like a dress because it is so long, but there's a giant slit up the side all the way to around where your waist is. So it has this super cool dark elf vibe about it. This is one of my favorite sweaters that I own simply because it's so long with this slit up the side. It looks really ethereal and magical whenever you wear it. So I'm excited to combine this with something. The last top that I'll also be bringing is this long sleeve top and the back laces up. It's also another top that has a really cool elvish vibe about it. So I thought that it would be a nice addition with those skirts. As you probably noticed, I like wearing high necks and long sleeves. It's just a personal preference at the moment. This is a suitcase all packed up, all the clothes in here folded and ready to go. There's my passport. We flip to that side. This is where I have all of my shoes, shawls, belts, and then right here. This is actually a really cool hip belt that I got from Earthbound a while back. It's got a neat like elvish style about it. I'll be wearing this at the music festival so I can carry around um, my essentials easily without having to lug a purse and this also makes it much easier to be able to dance and join in festivities without having to worry about where my purse is or if I forgot it anywhere after a certain amount of alcohol intake. Sometimes those memories become a little bit fuzzy and blurry. So that's about the general gist of the suitcase and um, I hope you guys liked getting to join me on the packing adventure and uh, even though it probably wasn't that terribly thrilling I hope you guys still enjoyed it and maybe at some point I'll do a full-on closet tour. That's that's still I don't know if I'm going to do that because I don't know if my closet's really that entertaining anymore as it once was. So let me know in the comment section if you want to see a closet tour at some point. <laughs>